Hey, man, the Oxio feature in Pro Tools gets deeper than you think. Much deeper. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And of course, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Now, let's jump into Pro Tools Aux.io. It's a feature that was introduced not too long ago, basically to allow virtual nodes between different places in your computer. It allows you to send audio from one DAW to the, uh, to the next or to record audio from anywhere in your computer. I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite ways to use Aux.io and Pro Tools and uh, yeah, come on for the ride. <laughs> so let's jump into this Pro Tools session. But before I do, I must warn all of you Windows users that this Aux.io feature is unfortunately Mac only and it's gonna be uh, requiring Big Sur or later because it relies on the core audio feature native to the Macs, all right? So let's go ahead and jump in this. First thing I wanna do to set this up is go to my setup menu and choose IO. Inside the input tab or the output tab, you will see this little button right here that says aux IO. If you're on bus tab or any of the other ones, you're not gonna see it. It's IO, input, output. So I just wanna go ahead and click on the aux IO to start to enable this. You can configure this in a bunch of different ways. You'll see that when you open this up, there are a bunch of different paths here. So you got the actual device name. Some of these are devices that you might already have. They might be physical like my Mac uh, speakers and, and the display mon monitors and all of that stuff, the microphone, the speakers from the Mac. That's all good. I don't worry about any of that. I got the Dolby Audio Bridge because I'm using Dolby Atmos uh, to mix sometimes. And then I'm coming down and this is what you wanna be looking at is the Pro Tools Audio Bridge. So they're all separated based on the channel formats that you may need. The thing that you need to be aware of is that each one of these channel formats, however, can only provide an in or an out, all right? And we'll talk about that in and out section later when we go to start assigning these. The other thing that we want to do or at least be aware of are these display names. These display names only actually show up in Pro Tools. Anywhere else you will be seeing the device names. I wish that these displays names some kind of way would show up on other places, but this will be helpful in Pro Tools when assigning the ins and outs. So a couple of things that you might see that my display names, for example, um, I have one called Zoom Out, right? And ultimately, this is an output from Zoom that I'm bringing into input, uh, to an input in Pro Tools. So the, as far as assigning the inputs and outputs, you always want to assign it based off whether it's going, coming in Pro Tools or leaving Pro Tools, all right? So let's say, one really dope thing that I love and I love using this for, I'm obviously not using it right now, um, <laughs> I mean, you'll figure that out in a minute, is that I like to record my uh, tutorials that I do here on YouTube with y'all. I like to actually record the audio that I'm doing in another DAW as I'm working in Pro Tools. So a lot of times I'll be doing a demo in Pro Tools and then I'll really have another DAW, mainly Studio One, because it's so much like Pro Tools, um, mainly Studio One running on a second monitor that you can't see off screen and I'll be recording both the mix that's happening in the session and also the microphone that I'm talking to y'all in. I'm not using that method right now. I'm, I got a whole nother method that I'm using for today because I just had to show y'all this, all right? So uh, basically, what I would do is just come up and first thing first is you want to enable some inputs and outputs. So I got a couple of stereo paths that you can see how many channels are assigned to each one to where the protein Pro Tools Audio Bridge 16 actually has 16 channels. The 2A, two channels, 2B, another two channels. That's great for getting stereo information in and out of Pro Tools. Of course, we got a 32 channel, a 64 channel, and a six channel, all right? Um, today, we're just gonna focus on using this 16, uh, Pro Tools Audio Bridge 16. And again, you can label these if you want to. Um, and I might come back and show y'all later how I work with this, like getting signal in and out of Zoom. Uh, matter of fact, let's start there. Getting signal in and out of Zoom. So what I want to do here is, again, the Zoom out is going to be assigned as an input in my Pro Tools. And so what I want to do then is just click OK. 
And one thing to be aware of is that sometimes, though, I've noticed that the aux IO is a little bit buggy. So, like, after I close this session, maybe shut down Pro Tools altogether, I might come back at a later time and realize that the aux IO just isn't working. And the fix for that is to just go to the setup menu, IO, open up the aux IO tab again, basically deactivate these paths, hit OK, hit OK, go back up here, and then just turn them on, you know, fresh. That, ha for me, has been a fix to making this work whenever I need it to. All right, so I'm just assigning those inputs and output paths. So I'm gonna hit OK and hit OK. What I wanna do inside of Zoom, actually, is go over to my mic settings right here, and I would click here, and then I would select a speaker because I, I'm, I'm literally, whatever's coming out of uh, Zoom, I want to record in Pro Tools. I just did this recently while I was recording a podcast virtually. So I had some clients that were recording a podcast in their studio, in their homes, whatever. We met up on Zoom, make sure that the audio signals were good. And then I literally used the aux IO to say, hey, you know what? Come out of Pro Tools Audio Bridge to A, use that as my speaker. And then I just go over to Pro Tools make a stereo audio track. And then on the input, you see I got my zoom out. And then anything that happens in zoom, I can record enable this here. And then basically any sound that gets, that gets played or anybody talking in zoom, I can record that directly um, in my Pro 2 session, which is really dope. Now, if I wanted to record what I was saying too, um, in Pro Tools, that would be easy as well. I would just need to make a mono audio track, right? And if I don't want to hear it, I can just set it as the output. I can set my aux IO path as the output here and just say, you know what, go out. And then we got Pro Tools out one and two. I could do that. Or if I do want to hear it as well, hear myself, which, you know, I, I might want to, I could just choose whether I want to or not. I'd prefer to just set it up as a send. And I'll go to the outputs on the sends, hit Pro Tools out, uh, probably set that to Unity Gain and turn that to pre-fader so that once I mute my mic, um, I don't know what kind of mic that was spelled, but once I mute my mic, um, I'll be able to ultimately ha uh, have that routed into uh, Zoom. So let's see, if I come over here to Zoom and set my, you see I'm getting a signal right there now, uh, that's just because it's using my studio display microphone. That's the actual built-in one on the Mac display here. But if I say, you know what, use Pro Tools Audio Bridge 2B, make sure that I chose 2B over here. Yeah, oh, well, it's, it's labeled, but yeah, I know it's B. Um, but yeah, and now you see we're not getting any signal. I'm going to connect the mic. It's a dynamic mic here. Just connect it. Yo, yo, yo. And then I need to come over in Pro Tools, input on that track. You see, we got signal, we got signal. And then if I look in Zoom, now it's getting signal too. So if I record, start recording in Pro Tools, I'm having a Zoom meeting, I'm able to record high quality audio uh, from both my side and the participants that are in the Zoom meeting. Pretty dope. Now, let's take another look at something else that aux IO is useful for like I was starting to explain to y'all in the beginning the way that I set up my YouTube videos uh, basically I would have let's, let's quit zoom I would have studio one running at the same time as Pro Tools and here's how I would set up um, my, my studio one session or any other DAW that you might be using to capture the audio that's coming from Pro Tools. Again, there's many of different reasons and applications. I'm just literally showing y'all that you can get audio from one DAW to the next very easily using this aux IO feature. So what I'm going to do here inside of Studio One, just go to its preferences over here and on the audio setup and then audio device, I'm going to set my recording device to one of the Pro Tools audio bridges. Now, it depends on which one you want to set. Um, in this case, since if I'm just breaking down the scenario like I'm recording a tutorial and I have a bunch of tracks in there or a mix or something like that, I would want to have the stereo audio separate from my mic audio. So I would need more than the two channels. So in this case, I'm going to just use the Pro Tools Audio Bridge 16. That'll give me 16 channels uh, co of communication coming out of Pro Tools into Studio One very easily. I'm going to just go ahead and hit OK. 
the other thing that you got to do in Studio One is always go in uh, to set up the I.O. So I'm going to do that, too. I think I did it already in this uh, session. But, yeah, you can see here Pro Tools Audio Bridge. And if I if I, I can delete all of these real quick and just to show you how I made them. But basically, I would just go to add um, first a stereo path. We'll label it. Um, if the stereo path will be my music. Right. And then I'll add a mono path. And this will be my mic. And you see how it corresponds with all of the different inputs coming from the Pro Tools audio bridge, which is basically like a virtual audio interface. I hit OK. And now I'm ready to rock and roll. So let's do a little setup here in my Pro Tools session, because more than likely, maybe I'm going to be showing how to have multiple tracks. So maybe I have like a beat in here or something like that. Let's just import a beat. As a matter of fact, let's import all of these tracks for this song, right? I'm going to add them in. Okay, so I got a full mix going on here, and I'm going to get rid of this track. We'll keep the mic track for now. As a matter of fact, we'll get rid of that mic track too. So I'm doing this video. Uh, basically, this is how I would do it. I would just go ahead and make sure I would probably already have it set up, but I would make sure I route these to a mix bus, which would be an aux input track. Um, so you could do it this way, or you could literally individually send from every single track. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and route that main output to my output. Now, all of these tracks is basically using a submaster. All of these tracks are outputting through to my mix bus. Right. OK, so we can see that they all are summing here. And basically what I want to do is just send to that output. And then I'm going to go to Pro Tools Audio Bridge. You see it there. All right. And I'm going to choose the Audio Bridge 1 and 2 for that. And if I turn up that send level up to Unity Gain and then come over to Studio One on my music track, let's just go ahead and and arm it. Oh, we got to assign an input. Go ahead and arm that track. Now, if I start playing in Pro Tools, right, you see we getting signal coming into Studio One, the same signal coming out of Pro Tools, and I can start to record that. And then it'll be pretty simple for my microphone. In this case, I'll just make a, um, not there, in this case, I'll just make a mono aux input track. Right, And then create that and then I'll just set my mic input here and connect my mic again and that and connect it there all right so yep yep got my mic on and then if I go ahead and send this over use a send and and in this case I want to go to the little is echoing now. <laughs> and in this case, I want to go to the output uh, tab here. And then we're going to use Audio Bridge 3. Because if we notice, remember in uh, Studio 1, everything was routed out to Channel 3. So um, now I'm coming back to Studio 1. And then the input here is going to be Mic Input 3. And voila, record and enable that. Bop, bop. Oh, <laughs> I didn't turn the send level up. That's another step you got to remember. And ta-da. You see my mic input. Got my mic input right there. And we are good to go. Like, I'm ready now. I could literally start recording. Anything that I say through the microphone or anything that I play through Pro Tools can get recorded easily right here in Studio One. So I can just start recording in Studio One. Like you see, check, 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 check. Go back to Pro Tools, hit play. And then once I'm done, I'll have a full export of both the music separately and the uh, the microphone audio separately that I can mix later um, coming from that, that other performance. Now, there are many, many other uses for Aux.io. You can literally route audio anywhere um, from anywhere in your DAW to Pro Tools. One other thing, I'm sorry, anywhere in your computer to 
to anywhere else. For example, even if I wanted, this is a Pro Tools feature, but let's say I had some sound effects on my computer or some somewhere I was um, checking out. I could go up to this little um, icon here, my system preferences for my sound, and instead of going out my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, you already see that we have the Pro Tools audio bridges here. So if I say, you know what, go to bridge uh, 16, and then anything that I start to play from my computer, any sounds that my computer make, now it's going to pop up on this channel and I can record it. Any sounds that the computer is making. So, um, yeah, I think Aux.io is a really powerful feature. You can use it for streaming, uh, video recording. You can use it to help you doing production, to record in between two separate DAWs, moving audio around your computer however you want to. It really gives the creators the freedom to work however you see fit um yeah shout out to pro tools for introducing Oxio a while ago i just felt like i need to get in here because i feel like it's an underused feature under talked about and just uh yeah something that i think you really need to be up on if you want to be a pro tools ninja i'm wavy wayne from wavywayne.com if you want to go more in depth with your pro tools knowledge make sure you click the link down in the description below to tap into my official avid pro tools certification courses be dope Thank you.